Sounds great. So, Swag. Oh my nice color you're wearing there. Glad we synchronized Let's... today. Yeah, we got the memo. Yours looks Squadcast. more orange. <laughs> so long. This is the longest hand we did balloons. Oh. <laughs> well, hello there. Do you what see? The? Yes. <laughs> you're just a balloon. I got balloon that. blocked. That's awesome. I'm happy with that. It's for our 15 people that watch. Uh, how are you? Pretty good. Um, you? I'm okay. There's no milk good. for my coffee. Nah, I'm all right. Are there are there secret things on your whiteboards beside you? Because I can read those. <laughs> can you read them? Lightly. To some very old, very old marketing notes. Case stripes online stops stops. It's a little small window. Studies. Totally case studies. Oh. So I can't read them. No, oh, good. My secrets are safe. Secrets are safe. Oh, great news. That was quite the entrance. Okay. <laughs> I'm tired now. <laughs> what do we do? <laughs> we did the whole show in like <laughs> six tries. <laughs> Such comedy. Oh, uh, uh, boy. Uh, What's up here? Have you brought a, have you brought a Haas brother video yet? Yeah, they changed it from serif font to uh, sans serif font on the tool changer, so I thought that was acceptable in purchase three. <laughs> they're so small. Because they're listening to you. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I haven't purchased them. I wonder if they've updated their... But uh, on machine notes... We this like machines. Oh. Uh, Lovely. Adventure Captain... I don't actually know his real name. The CEO owner guy of uh, Penta Machine that's making the solo, as they call it, um, mm. which is that kind of like mid small size five axis, I guess you'd call it. I don't know what its working yeah. area is, but they're Baby making like axis. a phone booth five axis. That's my what I'll call it that. Um, oh. It looks amazing. They did a really good job with the design, but he just did a whole, like, he did a bunch of photos and said it's, I think it's starting production and that they are, he did like a live video the other day of it machining and it's not fast, let's say, but like also it's a f basically a fully five axis machine that um, tool changes, has coolant. Uh, I think maybe the biggest question I have of it, I'm not seriously buying this is they've kind of rolled their own <laughs> controller. And oh, I think wow. that was more appealing in a desktop as their pocket NC version was. But when you get into a $80,000 machine, I don't know how I feel about a roll your own controller. I don't know. I, I don't know much about making mm -hmm. those kind of things, but it makes me more nervous than just like getting one and using it since... Who do you think the target market is for a machine like this? Engineers that probably buy like the Bantam and want more, more, they have money, they don't have a ton of space, they want to like buy their desk uh, for like Intel, you know, or um, fast prototypes is my guess. Or people just have a lot of money mm -hmm. and want cool tools. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's a cool yeah, looking it. thing. It's very much a phone booth. Maybe smaller oh, yeah, than a phone I booth. Don't, <laughs> I don't quite see the application. I mean, if it was a phone booth, that would kind of be more appropriate in terms of part size and reach and stuff. But it looks kind of like a desktop machine on a stand. It does cool. look like that a lot. I wonder if, yeah, I think Very cool. if you take the stand away, Very. you don't have the coolant and chip yeah. wash, which I'd say that's maybe its other big, which this is always just a lacking secondary thought on basically every machine it seems like until like maybe second gen or something like the umcs were no notoriously terrible with chip management for like i think they still are pretty mm -hmm. bad but they're better uh but they have a trash bin underneath with holes in it i believe and that's how <laughs> the chips get caught and the coolant goes through the bottom and eh, I'll, I'll, i'd like to see it work i'm not not convinced mm. uh that that's a mm -hmm. good solution but I also haven't tried to make a five-axis machine, so I, I'm impressed no. at what they have so far. Super cool. Mm -hmm. Work, 
working volume is a six inch cube or what is that 150 mil 150 yeah yeah okay it's not bad can make some cool cool things out of a six inch cube yeah Okay. Oh, it runs on 110 or 220. This is exactly, yeah, it's it's to put by somebody's desk. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Okay. It's very well, very Could sexy. I think I just have product lust more than I have realistic function lust. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want one. It just looks nice. What are you making on your real mill at the moment? Oh, what am I making? We are... The, the brass parts uh, yeah. didn't take me, uh, I think just the best way to describe it, they weren't technically hard. I used the same fixturing as last time, but I'm still in limbo with a few types of projects and setups where I maybe don't have the tools or the skill set yet where I do things pretty damn inefficiently. Like in this case, it's like, this is a bad one from last time, but, you know, I machined the whole thing in kind of claw, talon grips like this, put some so top holes, put it into a fixture, machined it again from the top. But, like, those are just in a, in a curt six-inch vise. Mm-hmm. And that's on top of a Pearson palette. And <laughs> almost all of our product things, we put in the effort and the time to, like, make a fixture that just drops onto the pallet system and there's no setup. It's all in the same work offset. So you, you never change anything, which is the best, cool. like the most genius part about the Pearson pallet is it feels like running a router in a certain way where like, Oh, you just align it to the origin go, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah. And there's a lot of tedium in, all right, next part. And there's only a few of them put it on, indicate it in or like use a stop but then even on the sometimes the stops don't align as well as they should for me when i do flip parts um Mm. so it just takes me too long and felt like i was catching up on other stuff so i didn't it wasn't as efficient as it could be but that that that's a lot of what i've been machining got these brass pucks next for some reason you know parts always come in the same uh runs right like two different clients two things of brass yeah, haven't done brass yeah. since the last time last year yeah cool how much yeah. uh job job shop work are you doing uh i would say too much but they mm. kind of all got delayed through the holidays like they were like fine yeah. if they were a normal timeline and then holidays in the storm kind of feel like they cramped all into like there's probably three or four of them and they just kind of all hit at the same time so we're finishing up a good amount of them this week and next, and then nothing else really planned there. But uh, hmm. I guess to continue my update, I think our product sales are the back on target again, which is nice um, mm. after Congrats. a pretty rough December. That's nice to see. I appreciate that. Hmm. That's awesome. How about you? What's up with you? Ah. Struggling to see what's further ahead than about a week. Right. Um, yeah. I've been trying to build some like sales projections because cash flow has been so challenging at the start of the year. I've mm-hmm. been trying to kind of look forward and go, cool, how bad is it going to get? Because often, you know, like we have a cash flow forecast that's quite advanced and Sarah manages it and it looks 12 months ahead, which is cool. Wow. But all the sort of you know beyond a certain point it's all theoretical it's like this is our quoting target therefore this is our sales target plug those numbers in on a week by week basis right six six months out our cash flow looks great but if we don't hit those theoretical numbers we just end up like we've just been chasing our tail for a year or more two years and so i've been trying to come up with a better way of doing numbers to plug into the cash flow forecast of like cool what leads do we have in the system right now when are they likely to fall what's their like percentage of likelihood of converting Mm -hmm. and then and then within that stacking in the theoretical as well like well based on average bloody bar we should have another x number of leads in this period as well worth this much maybe 
hopefully. Mm-hmm. Um, and trying to manage that in their table. Like I can kind of, I can nut it out for like what the real things that are in there. I can, I can work mm-hmm. out the ratios and balance the sort of what's already being quoted, what's about to be quoted. But I haven't wrapped my head around how to like slot in the the theoretical bit of that and balance it. Sure, sure, um, sure. So it's been something I've been working on this week. You kind of after hours, like and I've been so hyper focused on just getting quotes out the door. Pretty much since I came back to work, it's just like three weeks of quote quote quote, and um, I'm kind of aware that other things are slipping as a result of that focus. I'm like not not necessarily being the uh, the leader that I should be because I'm just like smashing along trying to get sales. I so I don't know how it's not something I'm super capable of either. Like I get focused on a thing. And then the other things always mm. suffer. <laughs> Maybe if I'm like perfectly slept and I'm getting to work exactly the right time, exercising, <laughs> eating healthy food, not drinking, drinking lots of coffee. <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe I I work all those things perfectly. But I mean, I have one. I have I have the range of I have a spreadsheet I use that I update manually and I have other accounting software but I keep my main income and expenses in there and the kind of recurring stuff is on another sheet and it feeds into along with like I update the bank accounts daily it's a lot of stupid manual stuff which hmm. you know sorry I just lost a oh. fixture on the floor <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds like you do it just cool no i do it daily and it was just Mm. my only way of well mostly daily uh my only way of like creating a sense of like are we going to survive or not because i never made zero something Mm -hmm. that was that reliable or there's enough time lag in it that just never worked i couldn't make it i just couldn't ever make it work how i thought anyway and Mm. there's a on the front page of my summary of all this there's 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, and then I think it's called the pessimistic view, which is like, <laughs> we stop getting money altogether. What happens? You know, like how many days nice. do we go? And that number is always terrible. Like it's, I don't I don't know if it's helpful. I, maybe I should adjust it to be like something better because oh, it says pessimistic 30 days. What happens? Oh, and yeah. it's just a big red negative number. And <laughs> that's not a good feeling, you know, like... Uh, but does it drive you though? Yeah. I, these things are all important to me to make sure that things, I don't, I don't have 12 months seems incredible to me. Like I'm happy if all the numbers are positive 90 days out right now, like, and have mm-hmm. been, that, that's been a huge advance. Like I just, to uh drop, we just put out the secret show number five. Um, which I linked that in the show notes, but um, we talked about that before I went on leave in November or something. We had recorded a while back, hadn't got it edited yet, but uh, we were reminiscing about you know cash flow and stuff like that. It's a common thing we talk about, obviously, but then it was notable that products have stabilized our revenue. But like, man, those numbers, those three, 30, 60, 90, 60 and 90, rarely ever were in the in the black looking yeah. forward. And now they are more often, which is just like, mm. I probably need to extend it to 120. You know, what what's ahead further? Start looking further down the road, try to cash flow better. So I don't know and that's because helping you at all. Product, product sales primarily, like are you, what are you basing those numbers on? Just like historical data of what you're selling now? Or yeah, are you looking back keep, at what you I sold keep this in, time last year or I wish it was that uh sophisticated. It's I kinda like manually look at I use this plugin for Shopify called Brightflow. And it's actually been pretty useful yeah. to look historically. And there are some weird trends emerging. November is always our best month for some reason. Products. Um it just plugs into Shopify yeah, and it's just same. like a free app. Um yep. but I mean we're projecting to do 50% more revenue for products this year than last year, which is amazing. Like, I, I my target's a little higher than that, actually, 
just to get to hiring some people and stuff. But um, I kind of take those numbers and put them back into my spreadsheet and then have dates on them in the income section. So then it shows as where we're hoping to get to. And yeah. then I track to see if that actually happens. But it doesn't give me any historical data, really. It's just always looking ahead, hopefully trying okay. to look at something a little more better. It's yeah goofy. I need to do something better, I'm sure. No, it sounds pretty good. It sounds like you're doing stuff actively, which is cool. I think that it's interesting that you've got the pessimistic <laughs> view in your spreadsheet because I was chatting to Sarah yesterday about this all time, nutting it out. And I was like, oh, maybe we need like, rather than having all this, this theoretical sort of target based income in our cash flow forecast, maybe it needs to be, it just drops off and goes into the negative because we can't see that far ahead. Right. And her opinion was like, well, oh, that's unmanageable. Like it's my job to manage the cash flow for the business. And if it drops into the negative, then like I'm not doing my job. And then at my sure. end, I'm like, well, but that What's sort of having reality, that, sort of, that sense of urgency would be like, oh, maybe that would help drive someone like me to, I don't know. Right. Go harder or my, try different things. or I don't know. I've asked my mentor similar questions of, he's mm -hmm. always asking me, what's, what's your gross margin got your gross and i'm like ah i feel like i'm on like shark tank a little bit i'm like god ah, um, it's better now um and you know it's Insert helped me numbers here right it's helped me a bit and i've failed the last couple of months to keep up on some of that stuff but it's been really helpful in terms of looking at like when like just for the scale of business we are we're just a very tiny little business mm. I kept asking, how do you know when you should hire, you know? <laughs> and his answer was pretty clear. And I have the number in my head now. It was figure out what your margins are. And, you know, then you know what revenue you need to get to, to support that salary number. Mm -hmm. So like if it's 10,000 and you're 50% net low numbers and you need $15,000 to hire this person, keep overhead, all this stuff, then you need to, what, do thirty thousand dollars in revenue to to mm -hmm. hire that person successfully. And that was like, oh my god, that's obvious. But like, honestly, before, I don't know why it just seemed kind of impossible for me to figure out those numbers when we were doing service work, like job shop. I just those it, nothing was stable enough to go. Mm. Oh, I could, you know, one month it might be just all over the place. So. Um, yeah, yeah. Back to the same story, I guess. But uh, I, I personally, I would want runway numbers of like just thinking about if I was trying to handle what you guys are working with, as so many more people and and all the things. Uh, how many days can we go right now? And I guess what would be interesting if you could somehow finagle it to feed in some some form of like what we have for cash flow. And if this job goes through, that extends cash flow 17 days or something. I don't know. That would, yeah, those kind of like finite yeah. things would help me, but maybe that's not useful overall. Mm, no, that would be useful. I don't, don't have those sorts of numbers. Right. I guess because we've got the like, it's going to work because we're going to hit these targets. Anyway. Sure. That's where my brain's at in that source. But, um, I think we're <laughs> just going to say happy birthday. Thanks, man. Yeah. Happy birthday. 40 on the weekend. Felt like a, How's it feel? a bit of a milestone. Good. All right. It's good. Um, yeah, no, it's 40, 40 feels good because I think I've kind of done what I wanted to do. And mm. um, three, three years ago, I was like, this feels like a milestone coming up. I want to hit 40, sort of the fittest and strongest most agile point in my life, um, which was when Very I started lame. doing the parkour stuff. And so, yeah, I feel like that's been a successful little journey despite a few broken bones along the way. Right. Um, so it's nice to Impressive. sort of hit 40 and feel good in myself. And, yeah, it doesn't feel like a big deal. And I had a really nice weekend just camping with the kids. I was kind of faffing around with what I wanted to do for my birthday. 
Mm-hmm. I was like, no, nah, I'm just going to go camping. Big Pack up the bike. Go camping up on the hill and some people can drop in and say hello if they want, but I'll just hang out up there. And it was super, yeah, beautiful weekend. It was nice. Fun. And I, um, I picked up a bike trailer on Marketplace, like a kid carrier, I two-seater kid carrier trailer. To ex- just to purely to extend my um, cargo carrying capacity on the <laughs> on the lot. cargo bike, <laughs> and so we filled that with camping stuff. Put the kids on the back with more camping stuff, and then like climbed a mountain, which I think was the limit of the bike's capacity, but also my legs. And um, right, that's a lot. And um, 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 but it was cool. Anyway, I, I have plans for this little trailer. I want to strip it down and turn it into like a little dedicated camping setup so it's got all like a little Ooh. fridge in it and um right. maybe like a little little awning that pops out <laughs> dedicated setup can it Pretty like cute. go up flip out yeah, yeah. That's what legs I'm kick out it's got <laughs> yeah. little pneumatic arms or you make yeah. like threaded kid apart dowels that are all you spin a thing in the center and it <laughs> so that's kind of my fun distraction at the moment and yeah that oh, was cute could, could that ski. thing is battery powered. The bike, yeah, or, or electrical. Yeah, it's pe- okay. Pedal assist. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say, how it are you pulling all that up a push hill? Up the hills. Yeah, even with the battery, the pedal assist was pretty pretty hectic. But um, we got there. Wasn't sure if we were going to get up, but we did. Um, Crazy. Yeah. Fun. Well, congrats. I'm uh, not yeah, looking forward okay. to that number, but sounds like it can be okay. It's good. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> we had a um a listener question this week from michael michael said michael said uh wondering if you all wonder if you all knew of any solid online courses if someone wanted to upskill in fusion 360 looking to carve out roughly two hours a week for night learning before my schedule goes preferably australian based if it's something I can put on my CV, but otherwise just to learn. Sorry, that was terribly mm-hmm. read on my part. Um, we'll get the robots to thought, read it better later. I, I thought you were um, doing an, an American accent at first, and I was like, well, this is new. Y'all. Y'all need to get on this. <laughs> Do you have a suggestion? I'll save. Um, I believe PDX CNC offer some services in this, t- <laughs> don't they? <laughs> I think I have That's four my... videos in a series yeah. on uh, YouTube. Justin's got some good videos. I'm sure it's a very, I'll link it, but um, whenever people say they want to learn, I say, all right, I've got these four videos. After that, <laughs> yeah. the best way to, best place I know is that my friend Kevin Kennedy has product design online. And if you've ever searched for something for Fusion on YouTube, you've seen his videos for sure. So he's like the number one YouTube Fusion guy. Uh, and he has what he calls a master class. Um, but really, it's kind of like not choose your own adventure, but like anything you want to learn. He's got courses and you pay like one yeah, fee cool. and um, I'll link it. It's we've What's had a name? lot of pe- uh, Kevin Kennedy, but the website's product design online. Sorry, I'll... Great. Yeah, links will be um, in the show notes. Right. We've had a lot of people ask about that over the years and we've referred mm-hmm. a lot of people to Kevin and always good recommend or good results um i message with him quite a bit he's a great guy awesome pro tip yeah i don't think i have anything really to add to that um my fusion learning journey i mean i came from solidworks so it was not a big uh shift to get into fusion but uh when i was learning fusion and also helping some of my staff get up to speed i watched a lot of lars Lars's Lars. videos. I learned from Lars. At Lars. Some point too. He stopped yeah. making videos, but he did. I think he works for but, Fusion. Uh, That's why. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. he made good stuff. Justin's got an introductory series, and yeah, yeah. I thought about making a new one because I think it's from twenty nineteen or twenty twenty when I first made the first mm. one. Um, and stuff just is, I think mostly just interface looks different, but yeah, the ideas yeah. like are all the same. Cause it's not really going into cam. I have a bunch of little videos on cam, but not in that series. So yeah, mm-hmm. 
Thanks yeah, we've question. got a bunch of videos too, but they're they're all internal, and I haven't, mm. yeah, been right. built for staff training purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah, cool. No, thanks for the question, Michael. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're going more down the Amazon, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I am. I am. Uh, my cousin sent me just I think maybe the best thing I've ever seen on YouTube last night. The most absurd. Video. That's Have you come statement. across Bobby Bob, Bobby Fingers and the Amazon boat? <laughs> That's... Well, you really really tricked me on that one. <laughs> I thought it was a book by <laughs> Jeff Bezos. <laughs> no. I will pop that link in. Um, so just just to get a little it's... behind the scenes here, Jim and I will make secret notes to ourselves in our show notes so that we don't tip each other off to what we're going to talk about. And then we often forget about what we wrote about and it's in <laughs> cryptic language. Like Jem just wrote, Jem recommends Bezos rowboat. And I was like, Jeff Bezos, huh? He has a boat called rowboat or a book called rowboat. Like what? <laughs> really? I was this Irish YouTuber. Uh, who goes by the name of Bobby Fingers, and it's the first thing of his I've come across. But I, it was, it was an instant subscribe for me. I was just like, "Oh my god, this is one of those videos." Which is like, I have that sort of sense of like, I wish I'd made this, or like, this is the type of content I would love to make. It's just absurdly good and weird, right. and is also it? like high, highly skilled. Like he's he's obviously a very skillful maker, sculptor. Is that somebody's um, I just happened to jump to 1535 and it looks like we're taking something off some guy's butt. Yes, you'll need to watch the video to understand what's going on there. Okay. Um, All right. But yes. Oh, I, I see where it's going now. <laughs> there are some serious tangents within it, but um, yeah, check it out. It's worth the 28 oh, minutes. No. Will do. <laughs> I think <clears throat> I have another one that I'm just going to guess is very similar to what you are doing, except for this is almost all humor. Um, but there's this guy, I do not remember his name at the moment, but I watch him every time his videos come up, but he does like really realistic. It's like, what if Homer Simpson was a real person and I'm gonna make him out of clay and he'll like make it hyper realistic and like it's he then scripts a whole thing as he's doing it and talks about it and does amazing shots and it's just, yeah. So good. He's Canadian. Yeah, I'll link that too. Link us up. High recommendation. Nice. I'll link. I'll link one. <laughs> it's hard. To, hard to explain. Similarly, I think. Yeah. Saw you kind of teasing publicly on Instagram, um, changing some of the way the website worked for your kit configurator coming soon. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Little preemptive tease there. Yeah, we're just switching our Shopify inventory around so that all the components are priced individually in preparation for them being linked to the configurator. Right. Because at the moment right. they're in a weird combination of different sized packs, which is fine, but um, yeah, right. just to restructure the pricing on those so that they're all individual and those prices are fed into my Rhino block configurator counter as well. And How? so when I'm... Like API oh, man, calling? Like, no, nah, that'd be cool, but no, nah, not live. Damn it. I don't know how to do that with Rhino. I don't know if it has webhooks. Man, back in school, there was a guy from our university named Nathan Miller. He still has a company and he made this crazy thing that at the time seemed wild, but you could design a 3D shape in, in Rhino and pipe it directly into Revit and then use that as a form to create buildings with. And he did, he's done a lot of stuff related to that where like you can use Rhino to do other things live with spreadsheets and cool. stuff too. So maybe. Yeah. yeah. I think it's called proving Grass ground. Upper, I believe you can do stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, proving configurator. Um, I woke up this morning. I was like, I think I gave Justin a date on the podcast about when I was aiming to have the configurator live. And then I instantly forgot. I think I said mid Feb, yep. maybe. I'll need you to did. listen back uh, and check that. <laughs> I told you to do it on Valentine's Day, I believe. That's right. And, oh, you, and then you said, you said, uh, you know how I like to do things at you know five a.m. on a Friday or five p.m. on a Friday, and it's like, <laughs> all right, that's right. Launch at the end of the week. 
not on track. Um, yeah, no, I think we're still on track. Unless I derail the plans by like at the last minute deciding that the drawers and doors and new accessories have to be included in the launch, but I'll try and restrain myself from that. Mm. MVP, um, baby. We're, just, we're finding like no time to do it, but um, I'm finding like, as Josh and I are quoting a bunch of stuff, like more and more use cases for building other products out into the configuration platform. Right. Um, like our, our other shelving range and some of our other products um, would be super useful. And I forget to now that if sort of that's something you're going to be able to do. With customers. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. Um, we're paying for the platform and the Kita configurator is just one product that we've built within cool. that. We can continue to add whatever we want, as I understand it bit more work to develop it all but yeah keen to somehow find the time i've got to just drag myself out of this quoting hole um but to do that I need to generate revenue so it's kind of <laughs> catch 22 that feeling yeah sort of de de desperate to like find hours to put into other development things and push product and marketing and put more time into the configurator and stuff but um today <laughs> Will just be another day of quote smash, I think. Quote smash. So, quote just smash. out of curiosity, like mm. people send you inquiries on your website pretty regularly, then, and that's what's generating your quote queue. Yeah, correct. Interesting. Along with sort of act active follow ups of uh, existing clients, of like, mm. um, how's the thing going that we made for you? So you've got any other things you need made. Right. Interesting. And, then, and that's and pretty successful. That. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Reminds me of the Toyota book, the machine that, you know, changed the world or whatever. And how I think about that constantly now. Like, it's such a mm. foreign thing to a contemporary America where, you know, whatever it was, the 60s, 70s, 80s, whatever that range, maybe the 70s and 80s, they were actively going out door-to-door -door sales for cars <laughs> and they could make your car within two weeks of what you requested and ordered with a salesperson in your home. Wow. Like to your preferences, not just like, oh, a different color. It was like, oh, we'd like there to be this feature and they would like customize things. It's just yeah, well, crazy. Yeah. <laughs> things have changed. Seemingly. Mm, that's cool. Mm -hmm. I need to have a look at the book, put it on my reading list. Yeah, it's like a, a dry, interesting. Yeah. Did you do audiobook or reading, reading? Yeah, I listened to it. I was in the period where... Listened. My little, my little one was up a lot at night and I would... It was like the way I kept myself awake. I was like, I need something to listen to that's not just... I was like running through my podcast. It's like, I need a book. <laughs> 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 so I just listen while he's eating yeah, it all nice. night. <laughs> awesome. Uh, I see you've been working on your packing station. Yeah, that's coming Looking out pretty good. Tidy. Um, yeah, I have a image that I sent to Ricky. I took it. That's interesting. I guess some maybe somewhat interesting. I took this image uh, before a before image of that area, and I put it into hey. GPT to try to get it, try to get some kind of thing that was like. Hey, inspire me, you know, and m remake this space into <laughs> cool. an organized. It was horrendous. Just absolutely <laughs> useless. It didn't look anything like our space. It couldn't, like, it was a flat image, like a panoramic of the wall, like where I wanted to rework it. And it kept turning it into a deep perspective, like down, looking down a big corporate <laughs> warehouse. And I was like, this is 100% useless. I just kept telling it, this is useless. You're not, you changed the perspective. Like, how is this even close to the same? And, it, and so, anyway, I found that image the other day again, and it was nice. It was nice to see it because even right now, it's become, we've gotten rid of a bunch of crap. It's more organized, we rearranged. And even like something that was kind of tricky, we we're talking about reordering stuff. We don't keep stock of like all the screws and stuff that go into products. We just hmm. kind of do a Kanban style system where it's like, oh, this is about out. And that used to take a little more effort to go and look at what was out of stock, but I was making an order on McMaster and it's like, oh, what else might we need? I just like walked out there and it was all just like right in front of me. 
just so visible in the little bins. Um, I didn't have to go searching and pull stuff out of the way. Like that kind of like, I think Adam Savage's coin phrase, mm-hmm. the first order retrieval. Um, we yeah. always shoot for, we don't have to move anything uh, to get to it is always my goal. Like I want to be able to walk up with, you know, a board in one hand, grab my drill and the bit and never have to set the board down kind of idea. It's what we shoot for. Yeah. And so Ricky's actually building our weird parametric table base right now and we're going to get the top on it either today or tomorrow so kind of should be first stage done until we realize what we want to evolve it into soon thereafter okay so pretty happy Sweet. with it nice one yeah awesome yeah we've been a little bit slow in production with the, the slowness of jobs coming through the door um so right. the guys have been kind of continuing our workshop improvement vibes a little bit so yeah our sort of packing and dispatch areas looking really good as well the workshop's looking great actually after the sort of summer you did a little tear down and clean up and it's a lot more space holiday time cleanup though too right yeah i did quite a lot over the holidays it's great that's nice mm-hmm. now there's just like a few piles of junk left over from that that i haven't gotten back to <laughs> right little hangovers <laughs> from that project being wheeled around the workshop yeah same there we had some visitors uh, come for kind of a tour pre-meeting thing. And <laughs> uh, one of our friends coined this phrase that I love that um, they call it the oh Jesus room, which is like, I can't deal with all this stuff. So they just throw all their crap into this room and shut the door. <laughs> like when people come over and we basically had like an oh Jesus corner um, where yeah. Ricky kind of put up a sheet, a, a giant table on a cart and then put a bunch of stuff behind it. And I was like, I went back there to go get some wood and I was like, whoa, <laughs> it's not very organized. Like we were, we were lying <laughs> to ourselves. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's gotten better. We're still getting rid of some stuff. And I like that. I, there's something so different for me about getting rid of stuff at work versus at home where it's so much harder for me at home than here. It's just like yeah, you know, right. converted my brain pretty well to like, that's not a thing we do right now, or we have too mm. many of those. And I haven't yet gotten to the point where I set a deadline. That maybe would be the key to like the price needs to drop or it's free or something. But like the longer stuff sits around, the more we keep moving it, the it's just taken away from, you know, all the other time. So, yeah, I have thought <laughs> quite a few times I've thought about what you said recently about how many times have you moved it? Like <laughs> just the time investment in moving one thing. That's not being used, utilized from one bench to another. Oh, for getting in the way. Right. It's been right. rattling around in my brain. Yeah. All that guy I used to listen to, or I still listen to all the time, Merlin Mann, would, his original suggestion of that was tape, tape whatever that is up in a box to get it out of your sanity, but then put a date on it. And if you haven't touched mm-hmm. it in six months, you don't need it. You know? <laughs> yeah. I like that. I've got boxes <laughs> like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I still can't do it, even though it's like I know these things. Like, ah, I don't I've know. I've got a box upstairs that has 2014 written on the side of it, as in that was the disposal date, and it's still upstairs 10 years later. Go get that box right after this. I want a video <laughs> of it going in the trash. The burning. Or the... <laughs> I want it burning. Yes, that's what I want. <laughs> I want to see it burn. A pyre in the car park. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's good content. Hey. It fits mm. your sustainability vibe for sure. Totally. Totally. Cool, man. Mm, yeah. What time is it? Time to noodle off and do some time things. Time to noodle off. Tell you, mm. shall we? Until next time, go check out the episode five of The Secret Show. We Beer. have more recording soon. Linked Hope. in the show notes Hope. here. Get on it. Thanks, y'all. Yep. Thanks, y'all. Bye. Thanks, See y'all. See you next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Ding dong.